So, fun fact, our channel has some history with Epithet Erased. In fact, this episode is being edited by Paul Lotza, the lead editor for the series. Say hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. Howdy, friendos. My name is Stuart, and welcome to the video about... Giovanni. A character who I started seeing a ton of requests for after I teased Idnis in our Krunk video. Giovanni Patage is one of the main characters in an independent web show called Epithet Erased. And if you ever watch the show, you'll see that the animation is really odd, almost as if it's set in a tabletop RPG universe. And that's because it is. Epithet Erased was inspired by a custom TTRPG called Anime Campaign created by Jello Apocalypse. Anime Campaign places heavy emphasis on improvisation and creativity, where if you play as an Epithet user, your powers are based on a random word and your interpretation of that word creates your abilities. For example, let's say your Epithet is Dimension. Your character could be someone who has powers based on physical dimensions of an object. Maybe you can turn a 2D object into a 3D object. Maybe Dimension means that you can pull objects from other universes, a la Rick and Morty. Or perhaps dimension means that you can add additional properties to objects, giving them a new dimension of complexity. For example, maybe you can add garlic to a sauce to give it a new dimension of flavor. Really, the flexibility of the game is pretty much endless. Link in the description to the full document to the game's rules if you want to read it. Epithet's unique animation style was also inspired by another tabletop gaming channel called Thrilling Intent, who uses character PNGs to make the viewing experience more fun. Here's a quick clip of them. Marcus has walked forward his creation. Uh, <laughs> have you given it a name? Uh, the Blendo Friendo. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, we eventually adopted that style ourselves into our own channel with our own Pokemon campaign, in which Jello and his friends eventually did make an appearance with some of their Epithet characters. You'll actually see Phenica and Rick Shades in Season 2. It's pretty wild and crazy as our heroes tear through a small section of the world basically failing upwards and solving all of their problems through very Looney Tunes styles antics, including fighting Ultra Beasts, creating paradoxes with theoretical future daughters, and even tossing a time god through a wormhole. However, our character today is Giovanni Patage, a captain of the Bonsai Blasters. Giovanni's ultimate goal in life is to become the world's greatest supervillain. As a captain of the Bonsai Blasters, he apparently has proven himself worthy enough to lead a team of underlings he simply calls his boys. The first action we see Giovanni do in the series is break into a museum with the goal of stealing all of the cool artifacts in order to increase his rank in the organization. Now, just telling you all of this, those of you who are an uninitiated might think that he is lawful or neutral evil, but like, no. Not even close. If you know Jello or his friends, you'll know that they are a weird and goofy bunch. Their collective sense of humor is basically a Monty Python sketch as if it was written by the people that made Emperor's New Groove. Uh, think comedic bad guys and less actual bad guys. Giovanni is a character who wants to be the world's greatest villain, even though he acts all edgy and hardcore with attacks like Lava Grenade and Demon Aura Energy. He's just a giant goofball whose epithet is soup. The dude creates soup and is just really creative with it. He is also fiercely loyal to his boys and frequently takes care of those beneath his station, saying that villains are only as good as their underlings. He is also disgusted by characters who are actually evil. So if Giovanni himself were to put himself on the chart, he would label himself as chaotic evil. But to split the difference, I'm going to just say he starts at chaotic neutral at worst. Most people who turn on the video will already probably guess what his alignment will be. So with all that out of the way, let's go. I, Giovanni Potage, fearless leader of these bonsai blasters, have come to steal your precious treasures. Tremble before me! <laughs> Giovanni and the Bonsai Blasters break into the museum menacingly. After realizing Molly was there, Giovanni apprehends her and tells Flamethrower, Car Crash, and Ben to watch over her while they go do evil stuff. This is technically neutral evil. Fire! And when they reach the back rooms where they encounter Mira, after being mocked by her, he has his boys shoot her with their pea shooters. That's a sentence. When that doesn't work, he uses his ability, teleports behind you, and attacks her with his bat for the crime of hurting his feelings. Chaotic evil. There! 
That should hold you. After being beaten by Mira and Indus's dual tech, Molly and Giovanni are thrown into a makeshift jail. Giovanni makes Molly one of his boys, and then they trick Indus into letting them go. Chaotic neutral. I hope they don't get mad at me again. You're kind of a pushover, aren't you, Bear Trap? After constructing Fort Cool Guy, Giovanni teaches Molly to stand up for herself. He says it's because he wants all of his minions to be strong and independent, but it's really because he finds it important for everyone to value themselves. Chaotic good. How about we see what you're most afraid of? Nightmare fuel! They are then approached by Dr. Sylvie Ashling, who attempts to trap them in nightmare fuel. This causes Molly to become paralyzed with fear because of her pyrophobia. Giovanni uses his teleport behind you in order to reach a higher ground. While there, he bonks Molly's head so that he can unleash his super attack on Ashling. The good doctor is then defeated, so he summons his fursona, Dr. Beefton, as a response. Chaotic good. Ah! What is that horrible sound? Together, they defeat Dr. Beefton, and Molly convinces him to join their side in stopping Indus and Mira from stealing the arson amulet. Since Molly was the one to convince Ashling to join the party, naturally we will be giving Giovanni credit for this conversation, since Molly is his minion. That's how it works. Lawful good. Now then, Miss Minion, if you'll please come with me. I... um... We mustn't keep Lady Mira waiting. Uh, okay. No! Indus tries to take Molly to Mira, but Giovanni immediately steps in, saying that he will protect her. This does not work. Lawful good. Later, Molly is cornered by Mira, who managed to steal Dr. Ashling's epithet and use nightmare fuel to trap her. Mira started monologuing, classic mistake, which allowed Molly to cast silence on the area, allowing the normally extremely loud Giovanni an opportunity to use his super attack on her saving bear trap. He then takes the arson amulet, and Molly asks politely if they can give Ashling his epithet back, to which Giovanni allows since it was critical to his minion's personal growth. Chaotic good, twice, and nat 20 scene. The woman steps forward and unsheathes a real ass goddamn sword and points it at them. Whoa! Is that a real ass sword? Percy then shows up and attempts to arrest the bonsai blasters and brandishes a real ass goddamn sword. In an attempt to save Molly's reputation, Giovanni pretends to take her captive so that she won't be associated with them. Giovanni uses his new ability to get away while simultaneously rescuing the captured bonsais and takes the amulet. Chaotic good. And if I get promoted in the bonsai blasters, that means I get to keep all my current minions when I make it big! Giovanni arranges a meeting with a con artist named Ramsey Murdoch. Ramsey informs him that because of the unique properties of the amulet, it is worth millions and it is practically priceless. Giovanni decides that he will turn it into the bonsai blasters so that he could get promoted with his minions rather than sell it for himself. Lawful good. Get him! Shortly after learning of the amulet's value, he gets mugged and then learns that he is pretty much the only bonsai blaster with any vice principles. Eh, get it? He then quits and storms off to the bar, where he then runs into Ramsey and Percy, who come to arrest him. Overall, a very poor day for him. Chaotic neutral. We can't let the soup hit his maw! Wait, hang on! Let him do it! You're still here?! Ramsey gives Giovanni the opportunity to run away, but for whatever reason, he comes back and saves Ramsey and Percy. It is literally never explained why he does this, so I'm just going to assume the best. Also, considering that he keeps Car Crash safe while they were fleeing, we'll just count this as... Chaotic good. And to absolutely no one's surprise, Giovanni is chaotic good. And I mean, of course he is. Giovanni marches to the beat of his own drum, but is fiercely loyal to his friends and others. He's got a classic case of edgy teenager syndrome, but just wants friends and people to love him. When I was writing this video, I actually messaged Jello himself, and he said, and I quote, he is 100% chaotic good, by the way, no matter what he tells you. So if you have not seen Epithet Erased yet, I suggest going to Jello's channel and watching it right now. It's actually really, really good. If this video does well, I think I would be down to doing all of the other characters. My personal favorite was Ramsey Murdoch, the thief with the heart of gold. Like, quite literally. If you like our series, be sure to go check out our Pokemon D&D campaign we played with Jello. Seriously, watching the Pokemon campaign as well as these alignment videos are the best way to help us out. And I will see you next time.